Hello everyone, this is Zebo and welcome to Z Best Guide series. So moving forward on the channel, any contents or guides titled Z Best will be highly informative, highly edited, highly scripted with a high level of accuracy and a stint of fun and lastly a ton of Zebo in it. So if you'd like to see more of such guides, you'd like to see more of Z Best series or you just like what you see in today's video, do remember to like and subscribe to see more. And with that, let us start today's video. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Z-Best Necro Drake Dream Realm Boss Guide. So in this Dream Realm Boss Guide series, we are going to cover everything about the four different bosses that are currently in the AFK Journey Dream Realm game mode. So we'll start off with Necro Drake, which is one of my favorite bosses, as we cover the skill set of the bosses, the different caveats that you want to take note of when you're team building against the boss and the different factors that the boss might have in terms of affecting your damage. At the same time, I'm going to provide three different scenarios on how I'll tackle the boss. Number one, I'll start with my free to play slash beginner account on how I'll tackle the boss from a beginner's perspective for the early to mid game with limited units. The other two cases will be with my endgame accounts. One is my free to play endgame account and the other one is my paid account where I have the meta teams for this boss itself. So if you guys are here for the free to play stuff, you have it. If you guys are here for the free to play endgame stuff, you guys have it too. And lastly, if you guys are here for the meta stuff, stay tuned to the end of the video. So with that, let us start with the mechanics of the boss. Okay, so for each individual boss, they all have a scaling move. And for Necro Drake, it's no exception. The scaling move is basically a skill which increases in level the higher difficulty you go. So for Necro Drake, right, the fourth skill is the scaling move, which increases in level as you guys can see over here. So at level one, when he casts the skill for the first time in five seconds after the battle starts, he will cast the skill every 20 seconds. So this skill will place a crest beneath each enemy, which explodes after 15 seconds, and the crest will disappear if the target leaves it before explosion. This explosion deals 110% attack damage and reduces their energy gain efficiency by 10% and attack by 5% up to 2 stacks. So at the first glance, this skill doesn't seem that scary because up to 20% energy gain efficiency decrease is not that big and 10% loss in attack is not very scary. But if you go into the endless mode, you take a look at this skill, everything is the same except the energy gain efficiency goes to 50%, right? Decreases by 50% per stack, and the attack decreases by 30% per stack, up to two stacks. So this means that if you stay in the crest for too long, if you use a very immobile team, they just need to get exploded two times and they're not getting any energy. So if they don't gain any energy, they cannot use their skill and they lose 60% of their attack and they have to rely on their normal attack to attack the boss itself. So this is the scary part about this boss. Let us take a look at all the other skills first and then we'll talk about a general analysis for this boss. So for Necro Drake, he will cast this ultimate skill at 15 seconds, 40 and 65 seconds after the battle start, dealing 70% damage three times to all enemy, inflicting a stack of Abyss Sacrifice. So this stack of Abyss Sacrifice will increase the target's attack speed by 10, but also increases the damage that they receive by 25% up to three stacks. So there's three ultimate casts, the damage received by the unit will increase all the way up to 75% because uh, this can stack three times. Then we take a look at the second skill. He unleashed a powerful dragon breath at the area with the most enemies, creating a one tau abyss mire, which deals damage uh, 35% per second to all enemies within the mire. So you just throw a puddle of uh, dragon flame, and then you, if you have a lot of enemies all clumped up together, or you have a lot of units clumped up together, they're gonna take massive damage when you consider the fact that they actually get damage boosted from the ultimate right so because they get this debuff all your units will get increased damage and if you have too many units all clumped up together they are going to take massive damage from this skill and then you have the third skill which is pretty rng based because he deals 50 percent damage to two of the healthiest targets stunning them for one second and uh, draining 40 energies over the next three seconds so this skill i'll say is not so scary it's more of the rng factor as to uh, who he uses this skill on because the unit gets disrupted and the units get uh, energy drain and then this could obviously affect your overall dps in terms of min maxing so that's for the third skill and if you combine the kit of this boss together it shows that you kind of want to build a team that's more mobile so you don't get debuffed too much by the final skill 
and at the same time you also want to build a team that can work spread out as well as benefit from the attack speed buff that these boss have from the ultimate itself so in this case physical attack teams generally will be a little bit better or just units which relies on um, normal attack right because the increased attack speed will actually benefit those that use their normal attack a lot so that's for necro Drake. and with that let us move on to my beginner free to play account team recommendation okay so starting with my free to play and beginner account the boss difficulty right here is only at difficult so it's more so for the early game stages and for this boss itself this is the team that i'm currently running so these are basically my strongest team that i have in my arsenal so in most cases at this stage of the game you will be using the stronger dps characters you'll be using the stronger support characters that are mostly used for dream realm purposes so your standard smoky really, really powerful dream realm character with the offensive heals right as well as the offensive buff for the team and then you have units like coca which increases the survival of your team with the very powerful damage reduction ultimate because this boss has a massive aoe attack then we have sisia which uh, deals additional damage and then we have odai which is my main dps which deals a lot of damage as well then obviously to finish up the final piece of the puzzle i have the faction bonus after including torrent so torrent is also pretty decent for this boss offering a, a, a damage boost as well as slightly more tankability so that the damage over time from odal's ultimate can stick around for a little longer so this is how i actually put myself for this boss and depending on whether or not your smoky can survive the barrage of the boss you can choose a different position for smoky so this will be the very general team for the boss because these are the few of the strongest dream realm units and Mostly if you're somebody who's new to the game and you're still developing your account, you won't have some of the meta units available. So that's that. Okay. So later on, I'll showcase what you want to have moving forward as you build towards the endless mode. So without further ado, this is the team setup. This is the positioning. The positioning is as such so that I spread my unit as far as possible. So when the boss uses the second skill, not many units will take that much damage. And I'm using the Star Shard spell. So this will be one of the most commonly used spell in the game for Dream Realm purposes. So with that, let us start this run itself. Okay, so that's it for this run. We dealt a damage of up to 2.5 million or 2590k, ranking at 15.8%. So pretty decent, honestly speaking, from a free to play account perspective that's in a server of competitive players. Next, I'll move on to my free to play endgame account showcase. Okay, so we are back on my free to play endgame account. So from a free to play player's perspective, usually resources will be very scarce. So from this perspective, I'm going to talk about the units that are the core for damage. These units are the core units you want to develop so that you have an edge over this boss itself. So obviously, this account, as you guys can see, have no Rainer. So if you have Rainer, use Rainer. Rainer is just really good for the Dream Realm bosses. He will be in the meta teams. But if you don't have Rainer, the two units which I always recommend in my Ultimate Dream Realm tier list as well as my Ultimate Beginner tier list, Number one is Merrily over here. And number two, we have Corin over here. So I'm not going to talk too much about their kit. Basically, these two units, they are very mobile. They'll be jumping all around and moving all around the map. And this prevents the boss fourth skill from applying the debuff to them. So this means that they're only taking debuff from the first skill. And on top of that, Merrily is a super duper powerful damage dealer because of the EX weapon skill. So over here, as you guys can see, Merrily's attack is increased by 5% when other allies cast an ultimate up to 6 stacks. So increasing the EX weapon for this skill increases the value. And obviously, the more ultimate you use, the more stacks you can build up. And eventually, her single target damage potential over the course of the whole fight is going to be super massive. So if you're super limited in resources and you want to focus on like two or three units to develop, then these two units will be your best bet because they will be used in other bosses as well. Then the other very commonly used Dream Realm character is obviously Kruger. So Kruger is here for the ultimate as well as the second skill right over here. So this one. 
okay and the third skill as well vulnerability so all these skill works together to make kruger one of the best debuffer in the game and then for this boss itself as you guys can see like i mentioned earlier i do not have rainer so if you don't have rainer you have to think of other supports to fill the role so obviously we have our dear smoky and murky which is probably one of the strongest support in the game moving forward right even now he's still on the strongest so you can put him in the middle for the healing for the buff and then the last tech that i use for this account is rowan because rowan can also move when he uses ultimate rowan also satisfies this condition for the star struck spell so star struck spell is basically a artifact which deals damage to enemy reducing their attack speed after ally uses their ultimate a certain number of time so at level 10 which is the max level of the artifact uh, it's three count so every three ultimate usage you get a uh, like blast of radius that deals damage to the boss so it's an additional source of damage the purpose why rowan is here is for three reasons number one is the energy cycling number two is the heals from the potion and number three is for the fractional buff together with our dear merrily and corinne as you guys can see over here so this is my faction bonus and with that let us start this free to play account and game showcase let's go okay so we have the end of the battle so this boss right before i continue talking has one of the highest rng factor because you're using mobile units so the position where your mobile units jump to right will have an impact as to how much damage they can do whether or not they jump into the puddle of mire that the boss summon as well as obviously whether or not they move out of the crest is one thing because for rowan there's a tendency that they, he will stay on the spot so you might want to redo the runs a few times to have your min maxing for your damage next let's move on to my final account which is the meta team showcase okay so moving forward to the last account we have your meta team showcase so obviously we have the three units i showcased just now so Kruger for the debuff, we are Merrily for the damage, Corrine for the damage, as well as the additional shielding. So the last two units, which was not in my previous team, is Reyna. Right, I have Reyna at Supreme Plus here. So we have all the skills unlocked. And Reyna's positioning is quite fixed in the sense you can only use him in this tree tower if you want to proc the boss uh, debuff, right? You want to proc the damage debuff. If you put him in front or you put him here, you see, you guys can see you won't form the purple ring. So for positioning wise, Reynos is quite fixed. Merrily is quite fixed because Merrily will be the target of the buff. I'll say Kruger is also relatively fixed because you want to have the shield activated. This uh, shield is a massive damage block that allows Kruger to survive for much longer. So that's pretty important if you want Kruger to deliver slightly more damage. So the last two unit positioning in terms of Temeja, I'll put Temeja in front because Temeja wants to draw the attention of the boss. And Temeja's uh, EX weapon skill allows her to gain unaffected after casting Knight's Heart, which is the ultimate two times. So she won't get stunned by the third skill in case she's the most healthy unit. And she also gained a HP recovery ability on her own. So she can actually draw attention, deal damage, as well as prevent herself from being stunned. And if you have her as Supreme Plus, you actually get a physical defense reduction on the boss up to 6%. So this is a physical team, as you guys can see right here. Merrily, physical. Right, Corrine is also physical. So yeah, this buff is excellent. Or rather, this debuff is excellent on the boss. Then for Corrine's positioning, I don't think it matters too much. I think you can put him here, you can put him here. So I'm just going to put Corrine over here. And this is the meta team. So the fractional bonus is 4, 1, 19% for HP and attack. So I will actually commentate this fight to let you guys understand why this is the meta team, at least in this current version. So let the battle begin. So at the start of the battle, Merrily will be sent in by Reyna. So you will see a purple ring and then she will actually get the buff. And the boss will actually get the debuff on the red ring. So you guys can see the units are all just bouncing around, running around. Merrily is jumping around. So we get this yellow circle that you guys can see over here. So that's the crest summoning mechanic. Since my units are super mobile, they're jumping all around. They're always going to jump out of the crest as you guys can see Merrily's... Uh, Crest disappeared but for Reyna's case because Reyna is relatively immobile you 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 simply can't control 
the fact that Reyna is going to get debuffed. But Reyna is just going to be there for his uh, like uh, dynamic balance, switching ability. So it doesn't really matter too much. So the ring is here again. Then the puddle is the second skill, right? Where she, he summons a puddle and then do damage to the spot where there's the most ally. So as you guys can see, Kruger has some self-sustain. The shield also allows Kruger to be tanky. Termasia is on the front line drawing attention. But unfortunately, Corin died from the burst of damage stacking as well as Rainer died as well. Unfortunate. But we still have three units doing damage as you guys can see. So all in this wow, right? The... Uh, Starshot spell is still dealing damage to the boss. So uh, this buff itself, or rather this artifact itself, deals damage based on the number of ultimates you use. So every three ultimate you do a little bit of damage. And since you have three units that does not get debuff, right? They can still use their ultimate. So this uh, relic will still cycle through and continuously deal damage across the whole battle itself. So this is the end of the battle. The RNG here is a little bit big for this boss before I end off. I have a max damage of up to 80 million with this team, but I guess I was really lucky for that one. But for this one, we only got 75 million, unfortunately. But then again, this boss is super RNG based. So do remember to try and error. Just retry multiple times to see whether or not you can hit better damage. And this is pretty much it for the meta team. So lastly, before I end off, I'm going to showcase the damage distribution. So as you guys can see, Merrily is the core DPS. Then we have our dear team major Corin, which are dealing decent damage. Rainer and Kruger, in a sense, they are more supportive by nature. So obviously their damage are not that high. So that's it for this video, right? Uh, ultimate team showcase or rather Z best team showcase for Necro Drake. Do remember to like and subscribe to see more AFK journey guides from the channel. And I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye guys.